So I taught woodworking at an inpatient rehab for a few years. Uh, it was a year long program and it was specifically for men ages 18 and above. And all these men were coming from all different types of walks of life. There were people that were homeless, there were people that had families that worked at Fortune 500 companies that for the most part seemed to have their life together but understood that they really did need help. All these men came in with different goals, whether that was just to be clean or for them to reconcile with their families, with their loved ones, to be able to see their children again, all different kinds of things. They all knew that they had an addiction that they could not defeat by themselves whether that was heroin or meth or alcohol or a sex addiction or anything in between, everybody there knew that they had an issue that they could not deal with themselves. They knew that they needed some help. Now, rehabs are a weird place. So most places accept insurance and that insurance really determines how long you're able to stay at a facility. Whether that is 30, 60 or 90 days, the insurance will tell that rehab when is long enough for an individual to be able to be rehabilitated. Now, if an individual has dealt with their addiction for their entire life, uh, most of the time, 30, 60, 90 days doesn't really cut it. Uh, some people really do find healing in those days, and I think that's awesome, but for the majority of people, they really need a longer time. So, this program that I worked at was a year long. Now, since we didn't accept insurance, a lot of what we did was based on donations from people. The program itself was $15,000 or at least the time when I worked there and that covered a lot of their expenses but not everything. So in order to cover the rest of the cost the rehab had a few different industries. We had a printing press, we had a culinary department, we had a maintenance department, we had thrift stores all around in the community and we also had the wood shop. That was a furniture business where we would make mainly tables and we would sell them at a brick and mortar store in town. Our tables ranged anywhere from $2,500 all the way up to $10,000 for very large conference tables and the men coming into the program had an opportunity to be able to work in the wood shop. I ran the wood shop and I taught men how to build that type of furniture. It was a ton of fun. You always had brand new people coming in, all had different stories, and personally I really didn't care about where they came from. I cared way more about where they were going. About being able to give an individual skills that they might not have had before, but more importantly, a self-confidence. Being able to build something with their own hands, step back and notice, hey, without me this would not exist. Being able to see a man transition from feeling shame and guilt from a lot of the decisions in their life for years and years and see that they are able to create something with their own hands and see the pride on their face and knowing that what they did was good and the things that they were accomplishing were good and everything that they were working for at that rehab, no matter how hard it was, it was all for the betterment of themselves and the people that they cared about. Anybody who's ever been to a rehab knows that it is not a magic bullet. It is not just a simple fix. You get out of it what you put into it, and even the ones that put in everything into it are still susceptible afterwards. After you leave the rehab, you're faced with a lot of real world stuff. You've got bills to pay. You have to figure out the right type of community for you to be able to fit in. It's going to be healthy for you. You've got to get a job. You've got very real world stuff to deal with. And unfortunately, some people don't make it out of that. They fall back into addiction and oftentimes pass away in the process. When I first interviewed for the facility that I was working at, the interviewer looked at me and asked me if I was prepared to go to funerals for some of the men that I would be dedicating a large portion of my days to. And honestly, it's something that I wasn't really ready for. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful things and a lot of wonderful life change that happened, but there's also the dark days too. Um, one of the individuals that went through the shop and ended up unfortunately passing away, his name was Alec Davis, and his family went to found the Alec Davis Foundation. That foundation is specifically built to be able to raise money for men after they leave these programs so that they can have a nice, safe place, whether that is with meetings or events or being able just to know that they have somebody that they can call up to go get a meal with and talk about the things that's going on in their lives. It is partnered with a local recovery group that supports all of these men that go to these local rehabilitation centers. Centers. They have this built-in community and something that they know that they can count on, go there and be incredibly honest and not have people that judge them, but everyone just wants to strengthen them and be behind their backs. So if you've ever seen Jackass, you know who Johnny Knoxville and Steve-O are. They came together and signed a few of these skateboards and I was lucky enough to be able to purchase one. I purchased it with the sole intent of being able to auction this off at the Alec Davis Foundation silent auction next year so that hopefully they could raise a little bit of money. But as I was doing that, I thought, hey, if I could get Steve-O or Johnny Johnny Knoxville to even just remotely pay attention to me, they might be able to help me auction this off. So that's what I'm doing. 
Hopefully, one of y'all will see this video and maybe, in a long shot, will be able to help me auction this off so that I don't just get a few hundred dollars extra than what I paid for it, but I might be able to get a thousand dollars. And that thousand dollars will directly impact people that I know, that I care about, and that genuinely need the money. Now, the money that I'm hoping to raise isn't going to be going towards large foundations or organizations. It is a group of small town local nonprofits that know where the money needs to go who it needs to affect and where it can best be used. None of the money that I'm hoping to raise is going to be given towards a marketing department or towards people's salaries. 100% of the money raised will be going directly towards the individuals who need it. I know that this video itself is going to be getting demonetized purely because I'm talking about rehabilitation centers and drugs, and that's just unfortunate. The more people that think that their issues are something that is taboo and just dirty, the more people that are not going to go out and seek help. It's funny, one day I walked into the wood shop and I heard one resident look to the other and say, man, if Steve-O could do it, you can do it. Steve-O, Johnny Knoxville, I know that people are asking y'all for things all the time and I completely get it. I don't want your money, I just need your help. So if you wanna help me out, that'd be really cool. I do not expect it at all. Otherwise, I'm gonna be donating this to the Alec Davis Foundation so that it can auction off next year. So anybody else out there that is watching this that is wanting an organization to donate towards that your money will directly impact the people that need it most, I've got two down there. I trust all the board members. If you're given a dollar, that dollar is going towards helping things. Not towards a marketing budget, not towards people's salaries. It is going directly towards the impact that you hope to make with your money. So, if you're looking for somewhere, I got two places listed down below. Check them out. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you all have a good one. Bye.